What's up, guys? And uh, welcome back to Beyond the Void Horror Podcast. My name is Alex. And of course, today we have a special guest. It is the director of Breach, The Breach, that is coming out on the 11th here. Uh, I should have this video up beforehand, but it is the director, Rodrigo Gudino. And uh, I, did I say that right this time? Absolutely. You got it. 100% All right. right there. <laughs> we practice it beforehand, guys. Okay. <laughs> Which very kind of you, but yes, welcome to Beyond the Void Horror Podcast. Thank you so much for taking time out today. I am really looking forward to talking about this because this is one of my favorite genres. So thanks, Alex. Thanks for having me on. This is this is fantastic. Thank you. Great. So it's it's you back in the director's chair again. It's been what 2012 that you did a feature film, right? Yeah, the last film testament of Rosalind Lee. Yeah, yeah. that was uh, 2013. I think it came out. Thirteen. Um, okay. And uh, I did uh, I did some TV after that. I was a part of um, uh, uh, Vincenzo Natalie's Darknet uh, TV series. Yeah, and, I saw that. Uh, I, I think I, I don't know if did I do videos after that too. Anyway, some stuff. Was he but, the producer uh, on that? Vincenzo, uh, yes, and he was the co-production, and he also did uh, obviously directed his own episode there. Okay. So, uh, yeah, he's got some pretty yeah. wild stuff. I love his a lot of his yeah. like uh indie stuff that he's done back in the day. So Absolutely, man. Yeah, Cube, one of my favorites to this oh, day. Oh, of course. And then Nowhere yeah. even. I like that Nowhere movie. So yeah, well, how yeah. was it to work on that set? Did you enjoy doing that? Uh for your you did one episode, I'm assuming, or one segment? Yeah. I did the uh the season closer. That uh, was really interesting. Yeah, I mean it was the very first time I I was shooting something that wasn't uh, my material. So that was very uh, new for me. And it, you know, it puts you in a different mindset. You know, you're, you're trying to, like your priorities are different. You're not as close to it and you're, you're kind of, um, you know, you're trying to, you're trying to get the best, you know, I mean, you're always trying to get the best, but you know, you, there's a lot more considerations when you write the material and stuff, maybe other things. I was You're wondering that actually, different. yeah, because I mean, mm -hmm. some people like to be a little bit more in control of their story. Some are just kind of like you know they'll run on the fly or like what kind of director are you and like how do you how do you like to do things? Well, I definitely like to do my own material. The, the, the fact of the matter, Alex, is that making a movie or shooting anything is really really fucking difficult yeah. it's difficult it's time consuming it's a drag i mean it's fun too but it just takes a lot out of you and i think it's like boot camp. I, I, yeah you know and I, you know i'm going to suffer that much it's probably got to be for my own stuff you know what i mean but having said that it, it was uh really really great to do the breach uh which also wasn't my my uh, material and, and Darknet, I mean, you, you learn a lot of things you couldn't have learned, I think, otherwise. So it was very good, very instructive. And before we get, jump into the breach, I kind of wanted to get a little bit of your background and stuff, because I know that you are, it says that you were born in San Diego, and then you moved to Mexico, and then you ended up in Canada, which is kind That's of right. an odd kind of uh, thing. And there's got to be some stories in there. Is there anything you could say that kind of like led you on the path to wanting to get into horror? Because also, if you guys don't know, Rodrigo, of course, is one of the creators of Rue Morgue magazine, and, which is a fantastic magazine, of course, that everybody knows about. But it is also published in, Cal in uh, Canada and throughout the world. Right, exactly. So, yeah, um, well, I was born in San Diego, California. That was just kind of like, uh, there, you know, my parents lived in, in Baja, California. There was a problem with the water at the time. So it literally just kind of was went over the border and I was born. I was actually grew up in a place called Playas de Tijuana, which is the beaches of, of Tijuana. Now, I'm sure you've heard stories about Tijuana. Um, I've been through many was, times. Yeah, right. So I was on the beaches. It's sort of like oh, it's it's separate. But even then, there was some craziness that that uh, definitely um, spilled over. And I have some memories of seeing some pretty bad shit. Um, you know, like dead infants, and then one oh, time man. another guy. Yeah, like car, car crash victims and stuff. It, it wasn't like a regular occurrence, but it it did happen, and I did see it. There was. Um, we had like this game, I think it was, you know, I was around six years old or whatever, and we, we would ride around our bikes, and it was this game of like, oh, if there's something going on, let's try and get there before anybody else does or, you know, some, something. 
And uh, sure enough, yeah, one time got the accident way too early. Just oh, saw too much, too much stuff. But my brother was with me too. Uh, my older brother, he has absolutely no like or desire for horror. So I can't really say that there was any connection that way. I think I was just into it really from, you know, like, just in, I was into it. And I could, I think I could make. Go ahead. I'm sorry. sorry. Uh, yeah, no, I, I could make the distinction between what was real and what was fantasy, which was really important. Because obviously the, seeing the things that I saw there were traumatic, not yeah. in a good way. I can imagine. I was going to say, like, maybe this is sort of in a way that you conquer your own sort of uh, fears in a way. It's like uh, being the master of it in a way, you know, not all horror needs to be scary necessarily because there's obviously <laughs> some funny bits to it and it works really yeah. well. But, yeah, I've always won. I've always found it fascinating how people get into horror because, you know, there's just a lot of yeah. tragedy in life and also positive things and. People are like, yes, how absolutely. can you go to bed watching this crap? And I'm like, I, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think there's there's truth to what you just said there about coming to terms with it, becoming a master of it. When I started Room Org uh, 25 years ago, I had a nightmare. And it was the last nightmare I ever had. And in the in the nightmare, um, I was in a, you know, when you're in a dream, in a dream state, everything is heightened and everything is far more either frightening or, or whatever than it actually is, like, you know. Uh, sure. what I can relate to you ver verbally. But yeah, in, in the dream, I was following this, uh, I guess, this ghostly presence through this really spooky looking house. So it was a very, it was a very um, counterintuitive thing to do in a dream. Um, yeah. And, uh, and after that, I didn't have nightmare. Uh, that was the last nightmare I ever had. So there, I guess oh. there was, there's something truth to, there's a lot of truth to what you're saying. I, I, um, on a side note, well, I mean, I actually had a dream just last night, and it was probably one of the most elaborate, lucid experiences I've ever had. And it's one wow. of those things that has literally just, like, made my day kind of awkward. So I was like, man, I'm going to start this interview off really good. Uh, but, yeah, I was, I mean, it's so detailed, like, down to, like, everything. It was like I was creating a movie in my head, and I don't know, hmm. it's pretty wild. Like, uh, it was a murder scene, and uh, somebody turned it into a a Halloween, uh, like, uh, you know, jump scare place, like a party sort of situation. Oh, okay. So was it, a, was it a fun dream though? Or were, were you frightened or what was the emotion? There was very many different parts to it. There was a girl who I was following who was going to be a part of this Halloween, this movie apparently that she was, uh, doing and she was stepping on the graves and she was like, I think I can feel his head. And I'm like, okay, I don't know if I really want to be here right now. Like you're kind of, it's cool. Like I, 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 I hang out with the goth crowd, but this, this might be a little too much, you know. The ground, the, the <laughs> so anyway, that's great. It, it could have been a brain dream frag, maybe, but I don't know. Right, you have to get into it to figure out what happened there. Well, I know that you uh, have done a lot of shorts. Um, you've also done work, as you said, on the dark net. Um, you did just have this new movie come out that is by uh, author. Um, I forget his name Nick now. Cutter. Nick Cutter? Yeah. Yeah, Nick that's Cutter. the one. Okay. And then you, yeah. uh, you've you actually worked with Aaron Poole and Julian Richings in that your last movie as well, which I'm a big fan of both of them, actually. I think they're oh awesome, fantastic. Yeah. You know, Aaron Poole, of yeah. course, was in The Void, and Julian Richings yeah. has been in everything. <laughs> so Absolutely. I told Julian, I said, I want you in every single one of my movies. Unfortunately, I couldn't get him for The Breach, but, I mean, he's just, uh he's just such a great uh photogenic guy and he's yeah. just you know he's just he's a, versatile he can do a lot very yeah he's he's very versatile and he's really into movies and um yeah i, I want to see him in my next film i definitely sure. need to check out your movie i'm sorry i didn't get to check it out beforehand i did the breach but i mean i didn't get to see yeah. that movie so yeah. i will definitely check it no out worries. Uh, <laughs> no worries so with this movie, The Breach, do you want to tell them a little bit about what this story is, and and then we'll get into some of the details of how it got started? Yeah, sure. Um, the, the Breach is a is a science fiction horror creature feature, police procedural, something like that. Um, mystery and uh, mystery. There's a mystery in there. There's all kinds of little things in there. Um, but yeah, it's, it basically concerns a, a a cop who's who has to go up. Uh, 
basically they found a, a body on, on a river and he has to kind of, he traces it back to a house that's up in the the, the uh, woods in, up north, uh, northern uh, uh, Ontario, which is in Canada. And him and a few other people go up there and they discovered that, uh, you know, very spooky haunted house type scenario and, and uh, the nefarious things this uh, particle physicist turns out has been up to while he's out there. That's pretty much it that you have to see the rest. <laughs> yeah, you definitely will have to see the rest because otherwise you'd be spoiling it. It's hard. Right, right. <laughs> I right. will say... I feel that it definitely has its uh, Lovecraftian sort of, uh, you know, obviously mind expanding sort of cosmic horror to it as well, uh, which I love <laughs> the mix of that science and, you know, like meta kind of weird. I don't know. It just gives you that nice vibe when you watch a movie like that. And that's why I liked I was very drawn to your movie because those that's my bread and butter. Now, are you a big fan of like cosmic horror or what is your favorite subgenre? Yeah, I mean, I you know, I have, like, all the subgenres are, you know, I have a special place for all of them. But Lovecraft, you know, about a year ago, no, it's been a bit longer, a couple of years ago or two, three years ago, I read the huge omnibus of Lovecraft, like, just all of his stories. Oh, yeah. and he is such a wild guy. I mean, his imagination, and it's just, you know, the more I kind of got into him, um, the more I appreciated him, his ideas, he really has a flair, a sense, a taste for the macabre, like really macabre ideas. Like Edgar Allan Poe, who's obviously another favorite of mine, he's a very romantic writer and he gets, sure. you know, there's philosophy in his in his works. He's, he's you know, the idea of the, the woman and the body decaying and all this stuff, the conqueror worm. Um, but Lovecraft, he has a way of putting you in the worst situation and just kind of exploiting that fear. Like, he's really a fear guy. He's a guy who wants oh, yeah. to frighten you. And he, and he does, you know, succeeds most of the time, you know. And his ideas are, I would say they're like, they're really um, coming from a, per, a, a perspective of someone who likes the genre or, or, or has a sense of the genre. They're, they're very sort of delicious is what I would say. So the... the, the how I just describe them. Um, so yeah, I wanted a little bit of that in, in this for sure, you know, and I think what, what you mentioned about science fiction for me, it was a, a mixture of science fiction and the, or science rather in the occult. So the idea that, that modern science and these occult ideas are in some way coming together. It's like a, it's like a circle in a way they, they're, they're polar opposites, but somewhere they're meeting. You know, right. and um, that, that that's sort of the space that I wanted to for this movie to inhabit. I think the fear is where it connects, because we can think right. of them on an outer perspective on each on each side, but when you connect them, that's where the real horror begins, because that's where it kind of crosses into your reality, and you're like, okay, this is a little too much for me. Right. So, um. Now, is Nick Cutter wrote the original novel. Did you have any kind of like leeway? I know that also you had a, another writer for this as well. Did you have any kind of like creative input on some of this as well? Like, did you get to change anything from the source material that you don't have to be specific to ruin anything? But yeah, yeah, um, yeah. The, you know, the, when the script, uh, when I was given the script, it was it was um, it was called Gone Up River, actually, and I, the, the the novel which was called Gone Up River at the time, wasn't out. And from the time that I received the script to the time I was shooting, it must have been about eight weeks. So I didn't really have a chance to look at any of that stuff. Wow. What happened was when I when I received the script, um, I literally said uh, to uh, the, produ uh, the pr producers, I said, look, can I change some stuff? And they said, yeah, you got like basically this amount of time, this change you know and and nick his name's actual name is craig davidson and his co uh his co-writer uh ian weir they were they were really um uh welcoming for me to to make changes um, that's cool so i and so i had a bunch of stuff you know i changed things um but you know their their the main their script remained intact their their main story was is still there i just changed a bunch of uh, things I added, I think I added more of the Lovecraft stuff, and I added this whole idea of this entity and so on and so forth. Um, um, 
And uh, yeah, to this day, I actually haven't read the book, so I don't really, I don't even know. I, I think the <laughs> book came out, it was called The Breach. So I guess there was a little bit of cross pollination uh, back and forth. Yeah, they like changed it. So now they're optioning yeah. films before they put the book out. So it's like, right, so. <laughs> <laughs> it's like now we yeah. have the movie and the book. So, um, well, yeah, right. <laughs> so that's interesting. So um, now I know that one of the actors in the film, Alan Hawko, is also a producer of the film as well. Did yeah. he did he have a big part to do with this filmmaking in you as well, like as like a director, or how how did that work? No, with him in particular, um, a lot of everybody was pretty hands off. Even Slash, because he was a he was a producer as well. But every, everybody was um, was was pretty hands off. Um, Slash the, the guitarist, by the way, guys. Yes, he does right, the music right. in this as well. Right, right. So, uh, yeah, they, they just kind of let me do, um, you know, kind of whatever I wanted. They would just, you know, obviously sticklers on deadlines and stuff like that. Yeah. But, yeah, but other than that, no. I really liked him as the, uh, the officer in this. I thought he was really yeah. good. I think that's, a, like, one of the more important roles for me because if it doesn't, if it's too much, it's too... It just doesn't feel right, and I think you got the right mix with him and everybody in the cast. Yeah, um, yeah. it wasn't a huge uh, cast, yeah, but you did a really good job, like of picking out the good scenes there. I think, and well, thank you, man. Uh, yeah, I mean, Alan, he was for me. Uh, I was super happy to get him because uh, um, he was. He's you know, he's a he's an actor. He's a thespian. The guy's he's you know he's a serious actor, and and uh, I always. Um, worry when especially when when i'm working with stuff that's too genre that it might turn off people who are you know a bit more serious about their 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 craft um so i was super happy that he he decided to go on this ride and he completely committed to it he was so into it he was a, he was really great to work with i'm not just saying that you know people say oh, yeah people are great to work with no he was really really great to work with he was just so there all the time he was just so committed to the part um so yeah, I'm happy. I'm happy to hear you say that uh, that that all his work came across because I totally think so too. You know, that's like when I watch a movie. Like you know, like I understand that there's independent, different levels of you know, because everything costs money. And as you, we previously spoke, you know, it's not easy work here, guys. Like doing a movie, it, it could yeah. go south instantly, and for over something yeah. that was so little, and you just got to try yeah. to keep it together as much as you can. Um, but yeah, no, I really enjoyed everybody's performance in there. And that's what I usually notice first is the acting. And then, then the atmosphere sort of kind of kicks in and then I kind of get to the story a little bit afterwards. And then just, you know, the vibe is really important to me. And I think the, the music that was in here at first, I was a little surprised by it. Cause I was like, okay, so slash is making music in this as well as producing. And I thought it was actually kind of cool. It had like a John Carpenter esque sort of uh lovecraftian sort of like feel to it you know like i don't know yeah for sure i mean so slash um he uh, so to clarify he co contributed and wrote a bunch of the music for the movie and we we you know we used all of his uh all of his pieces he actually also wrote uh some loops some tension riffs and things like that we added into the to the sound design and certain parts of the movie um but he was uh when he was writing music for this he was uh rehearsing for this guns and roses mega tour worldwide craziness okay. and at some point he had to go and i still needed to patch up some parts i noticed so, that yeah. uh, yeah, yeah. So I had, so I, luckily I remembered, I don't know, I, that I, I had released an album back uh, a little while ago with a friend, uh, James Circle Fisher, and he had done a bunch of music for the stage uh, production that we had done. And so I worked with him and we, we got some of, uh, some, some of his music into the, into the soundtrack as well. Nice. And then, you know, I also, so I also um, uh, licensed the song there by a Turkish uh, goth band named She Passed Away. At the and, end, yeah. Great song, yeah. by the way. I, I had Not actually nice. added to my playlist. Nice. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I have a Vamp Moods uh, playlist that I do, so it's like it fit perfectly in there. Kind of reminded they me of like uh, Girl Walks Home Alone at Night, like the music that was in that. Totally. 
So for sure, man, they are definitely Vamp Mood. If they change their band name to Vamp Mood, it would work. Yeah, is a hundred percent, man. It's like really on the nose, like good too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so now, as and you did this movie, there was a couple of things that you did in the movie, and I'm not going to get into spoilers or anything, but there was a choice that you made to do some things in the open light, and I wanted to kind of <laughs> ask you about that. Was that like a, a choice, or was that in the story, or uh, did you want to? Is was there like a technicality to it or anything? Because you know, normally most stuff is at night and you have a lot of cabin in the woods. You got, uh, this, the scientific, like Lovecraftian sort of, uh, thing going on and well, as well with the science and then that too. So I wanted to see why you chose to do that. Yeah. Right. Okay. So, um, yeah, the, the, uh, there was different reasons as to why I chose to go into the day. One of the, one of them, this is no particular order, but my last movie, the last one, Testament of Rosemary Lee, takes place over the course of one entire night. And I, you know, obviously didn't want to repeat myself and be like, oh, this is just an, a night, I think. But, you know, those creatures do look creepier at night. Um, and we did, we, but, you know, at some point I was like, you know, we got to go into the day. And I think it would be really fascinating to, to, you know, this movie is all about understatement of what's happening in the shadows. And then suddenly you get into the day and these things come out and right. they're just right there in your face, you know? And I remember when I saw uh, Romero's Day of the Dead and I thought, man, you know, when he did that, that was really awesome. You know, you just have to be on point with your effects and um, the way you move your creatures and so on, so how, how you shoot them. Um, and I was up for the challenge. And uh, I think it made a, you know, I think the, it made the movie more unique because, you know, you usually expect the opposite. You expect the creatures to be at night and they're in the shadows, can't quite see them. Right. And then, you know, daytime, oh, okay, a little bit of a well, spike. Kind of breaks reality in that sense. It's like, okay, well, now things have gone really bad. <laughs> you know, now that it's out in the <laughs> exactly. daylight, like, there's no saving anything. You know, like, the light's right. out, right. what are you going to do? It's not like Evil Dead, you know what I mean? Right. Where the, they, the the evil subsides till the night again, you know. So right, right. dead by dawn, they say. Um, but there you go. so now, did you have any kind of particular things on the set that uh, any troubles or funny stories that you might have to tell about shooting this movie? I know you shot up in Canada, so in Ontario, you said so, and it was a beautiful set, by the way. I love the area. So thank you. Yeah, I got lots there? of stories. Yeah, well, what happened was this was during the pandemic, right? So this was late uh, 2020. And initially I thought, oh, we're going to go into this town. We're going to have the run of the place. There's nobody on the streets. There's nobody in the parks. In fact, the opposite was true because everything was closed and you couldn't, couldn't, couldn't rent anything. You couldn't do anything anywhere. So I was like lost all my locations kind of, you know, or didn't have them. So we had to really be creative. Uh, so, for example, that boat scene where you see them going all the way up river at the beginning of the movie, most of that was shot in a parking lot when they were running beside the boat, giving oh, them wow. direction. Yeah, yeah. So the, those actors weren't on the water. They they were they were doubles, body doubles that were on the water and the the drone shots. And so just sort of like, um, you know, doing the doing a very very clever editing. We're able in sound design we were able to sell the idea that hey um these guys are on the water but but they weren't they were just being pulled by a by that you know three miles an hour by you know this <laughs> van around and around a parking lot and uh yeah there was a bunch of other stuff you know uh gosh uh we had um you know the entire house was you know because we were in times of pandemic too we had to make we were bubbling in a hotel and we were all in this hotel and so we ended up building the house and the ballrooms and stuff like that. Really? Hotels. Okay. Yeah, yeah. All that was all in the ballrooms. It, we we kind of had to, it was piecemeal, little bits here, little bits there. And we had to kind of go around the the entire sort of hotel to to shoot different parts of this house to, to make it look like it was one house. Interesting. Um, wow. Yeah. And the creatures, again, you know, again, times of pandemics, so we couldn't get, like, I wanted, you know, uh someone like 16 of these creatures i could only get four right so i had to do plates to shoot them in plates and do them differently and so you you have this sense that there's a whole bunch of them right yeah <laughs> but, i was gonna say there's more than that that i thought yeah 
Yeah, yeah. There, there was uh, on, on screen. If you're kind of counting them, I think it comes out to about sixteen or something like that. Okay. But but in reality, there, there was uh, less than that. four. Now I I didn't see exactly who was in control of the special effects as far as practical in there because it gets a little confusing because there's so many people you know because it's not just one person obviously but you know uh the special effects are pretty wild there's a lot of like uh i don't want to spoil too too much for people but there's a lot of crazy stuff on the body it's very body horror in that regard um did you have any creative input on that as well or was there yes i I work very closely with daniel baker is the effects uh guy and his team uh, mainly with Dan and he, you know we were talking about how to make these creatures kind of you know uh, a little bit off the beaten path you know uh, talked a lot about sort of uh, what this entity was doing and how it was coming into this world we had a bit of an epiphany at one point when I said to him you know I think what we can do is maybe picture like if we put a human being in a blender and then we just press pulse once or twice and what would that look like and <laughs> kind of came up with this uh, creature design um that that seemed to speak to that and um well there's the creature you know, design the other, and then there's yeah, the leftovers and uh yeah, i think right. the uh the best expression in the entire movie was like holy shit <laughs> when, he, when when his uh when the the guy sees the body and i was like because you don't show it right away which i thought was genius i love that right uh <laughs> and that was just like the perfect yeah. thing so uh yeah that impressed me too i was like wow that's really gnarly looking like what the hell's going on in this movie so you had me yeah, they, right there oh that's great man they they i mean they created that body out of <clears throat> excuse me <clears throat> out of nothing practically like they really i mean daniel and his team put that together it was pretty fascinating how they how they got it to look so gruesome when, when they showed up with the elements i was like how's that gonna i mean like a doll or something <laughs> yes. clean. but by the end of it i was like oh my god yeah this is, this is pretty gnarly so uh i'm glad you liked it yeah no I, I think you guys are gonna enjoy that aspect of it pretty pretty well it's uh i i really enjoyed the story and i don't want to spoil it but it's like there's so much i want to ask you about it in a way but there's a, a lot of elements that are outside of lovecraft even that are in it's just a mix of a lot of really interesting things and i really appreciate you taking the time to sit with me today to talk about it if you guys want to check it out it's coming out on vod on the 11th and uh, i should have this up before then so uh is there going to be a blu-ray release do you have any in the in the works on that or is it there yes something i you know i don't know i should know that but i don't know yet that's okay <laughs> we have a lot of people be, that yeah. collect on our channel so it's right. they might want to pick it up at some point but at least check it out because i think if you're a fan of lovecraft i think you'll enjoy it so is there anything that you want to add to uh to the interview to kind of like share with everybody no, uh uh well you know uh no it's just a really uh really fun fun thing to do man and i'm just really happy that you dug it and and thank you so much for sharing it with your listeners and stuff it's always uh you know it's always a a uphill battle trying to get promote the film and trying to make sure people you know get the eyeballs on it so I, i really appreciate it yeah absolutely i thank you for giving me the opportunity to check it out i've been waiting on it since last year i i really wanted to see it last year me and my buddy were going back and forth he was like you see this and i was like oh it looks like our movie and <laughs> nice. <laughs> so, nice nice man because right we on. love that that doorway horror kind of thing where it's like you know something from beyond and it always just kind of like it fits right in there. Yeah. So even if, if if everybody isn't a fan of the subgenre, I think you should check it out anyway because there's there's a lot in there. So that's cool. I like the way you refer to it. It's kind of like a sub subgenre within a subgenre. It's like cosmic horror, but this one's doorway horror. Yeah, doorway very much so. <laughs> I, yeah, yeah. I, it's hard not to say anymore. I don't want to say too too much because I think it'll be a surprise for them if they see it. So, but yeah. Rodrigo, it was amazing talking to you. Really great pleasure to speak with you, and I hope to see you in the future for your next release. Absolutely. Thanks, Alex. Really appreciate it, man. All right, man. You take care and stay in touch if you have anything new. I definitely will. All right. Take care. Thank you so much. Join us. Join us. Beyond.